Good morning, everybody. It's Andrew Jordan again. Just wanted to share a quick idea with you about a topic I've been thinking about recently, which is dealing with the claim that there was a gospel written in Hebrew, or so it seems. Many church fathers, early church fathers, and th uh, from the second to th uh, fourth century, claim that either the Gospel of Matthew or the Gospel of the Hebrews, or perhaps an unnamed Ur Gospel or source gospel was written in the Hebrew language um, as it's commonly translated. This in Greek is Ebraivi dialecto, uh, which is mentioned in Papias. The question is though that the, we have two ambiguous words next to each other in the Greek, both of which could lead in different directions. So we really have to understand what those words meant in context to understand what the meaning of this phrase might be. Many translators assume that it means Hebrew language. However, um, as, as, I'm, as I'm exploring in a paper that I'm currently working on um, and getting ready to submit, that the word that we would translate as Hebrew um, has been understood to refer to either Aramaic or Hebrew. However, there has been a recent um, analysis by uh, scholars that uh, Booth and Pierce that um, questions the traditional assumption that this could refer to Aramaic, uh, showing quite quite um, convincingly that this word in antiquity always referred to the Hebrew language. However, the word dialecto um, uh, or dialectos in the nominative nominative is um, is not as unambiguous as the word for uh, Hebrew and Greek. Um, and the word dialectos can refer to a number of modern linguistic phenomenon, which we might associate with dialect in terms of regional variation, uh, uh, the dialect of consider London versus New York or Boston or Los Angeles, um, the Southern United States, South Africa, et cetera. Uh, or it can refer to stylistic variation, which you might associate with the context in which you're speaking. Uh, so for example, uh, speaking with a um, dignitary or a government official um, or uh, someone you're not very uh, familiar with, with uh, in comparison to your own family or friends, you're going to have a stylistic variation on how you speak. Uh, or even a socioeconomic status variation. Uh, so you might consider the speech of a working class blue collar person versus a, a white collar Harvard educated lawyer, for example, or something like that. This is all the uh, possible meanings of the word dialectos, which complicates the interpretation of Ebraivi dialecto in the Greek, which is coming directly from Papias in the second century. However, as quoted by Eusebius much later. Uh, so my contention uh, in my paper, I'm exploring these terms and um, exploring what they could possibly mean, uh, relying on concepts from modern linguistics, particularly uh, studies in bilingualism and multilingualism, uh, which would help us understand the uh, boundaries between languages. And if we can apply modern concepts to ancient uh, speech patterns, which we assume that we can, that's an assumption of modern linguistics. And um, so when we look at the um, all the evidence available, and this is just a summary, obviously, of what I'm working on, uh, we can rule out, I think, rather conclusively, that the um, word Hebrew, uh, translated from Greek to English, is referring to Aramaic. I don't think there's much evidence to point to that. There were different words to use to refer to Aramaic. Um, the only way that you can come about that is to question some of the sources that we have. Um, and I do that in the paper by looking at the bilingual or monolingual status of the person writing. And we know that uh, bilingual speakers, uh, such as Josephus and others, uh, are consistent in their use of uh, different terms to refer to Hebrew and Arabic. However, monolingual speakers, for example, like Philo of Alexandria, are not consistent um, in their use of the word in Greek for Hebrew to refer to Hebrew and Aramaic separately. 
So you could question that. Um, and so, but I think that overall the evidence points in the direction that the word Hebrew here is referring to Hebrew language. However, the juxtaposition of this word with dialectos, which is a, a much more ambiguous term, opens up the possibility of a third option, which is a specific Hebrew style of speaking in Greek, which I believe is what the uh, Hebrew gospel is referring to. Uh, this would be much similar to uh, Jewish uh, linguistic repertoires, uh, as has been studied uh, in multiple occasions in different languages. For example, people are familiar with the common Jewish languages of Yiddish, Ladino, uh, and others. Um, but even in modern English, in America, uh, in Britain, perhaps, uh, in what is referred to as Yeshivish, which is um, English language, but with a large number of Yiddish and Hebrew and Aramaic lexical uh, items, like, uh, words, uh, that would make it nearly un, uh, nearly impossible to understand for someone who didn't understand what those words meant. So I believe that this is what the uh, Ebraivi dialecto refers to in Papias and other early church fathers is the idea that there was a gospel written by Jews in a very Jewish style of speaking Greek much similar to the way that modern yeshiva students speak yeshivish uh, English, Judeo-English, we could call it, uh, that is hard to understand if you don't understand the Yiddish, Hebrew, and Aramaic for, uh, lexical background. And so that's the first layer of the analysis. The second layer is to understand how this phrase became to be interpreted in the early church fathers themselves, which goes in a different direction. Uh, in the fourth century, we have writers um, in Jerome, particularly, who um, re who references very specifically the characters or script, the alphabet that is used by the Hebrew gospel. Uh, he clarifies that the Hebrew gospel he's referring to is written in the Aramaic language, but in the Hebrew script, which is a very specific term that is referring to what we now know as block script or the the alphabet that you would commonly associate with Hebrew um, was not always the language, the alphabet associated with Hebrew. It was first uh, written in a different script called Paleo-Hebrew script, which is maintained to this day by the Samaritan community. Uh, and so he is saying, Jerome is saying that the language, uh, what we would call language of the text is Aramaic, but the script of the text is Hebrew. And this script was given special religious significance starting in the first century, perhaps. Um, and this is evidenced in the Dead Sea Scrolls, where we can see the transition from Paleo-Hebrew to script, uh, block script Hebrew, sometimes called Aramaic or Assyrian script, because it actually originated for the Aramaic language. Um, and um, Epiphanius also references the uh, script of the original Hebrew gospel, which is variously associated with Matthew or the gospel of the Hebrews, depending on how you interpret the references themselves. But um, Epiph Epiphanius also mentions the script that the uh, language is written in, specifically referencing the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, so I uh, contend in this work, this paper, that the, under the understanding of the church fathers themselves of the word of the phrase Ebraivi dialecto was uh, referencing um, was ambiguous and with regard to the language itself, uh, it's not clear if they understood it to be Hebrew or Aramaic. But was what was important to them was to clarify that it was written in the Hebrew alphabet, what we associate today with the block script. Um, and this was give was done to give religious significance to the original gospel text which I believe they were probably associating with Matthew, but possibly the Gospel of the Hebrews. Um, this would have been important for them at that time to establish the antiquity of their uh, new religion in Christianity, which did not have the same uh, and the same status of being an ancient religion as Judaism did. Uh, so the linking of the Gospel text to the Hebrew script uh, gave it an additional claim to antiquity.
and serve the needs of what the church fathers were doing in their time and in their interpretation. Um, that's all I have for you today. Everybody have a great day. Bye.